Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 14th. Um, weather's nice. It's, oh my God. Looks like it's, whoa. Just hit my mirror right into the wall. So this workspace is actually really tiny. Um, it's probably, like I can almost, from one wall to the other, it's probably only like a foot and a half from, it's like longer than my wingspan here. <clears throat> and then this way, it's if I put my arms out straight like this, I'm out the door. <laughs> it's actually really kind of tiny. This little bathroom is like, I, I've always called it um, the closet bathroom because it's it's like not much bigger than a than a walk-in closet. Or, well, not a walk-in closet. It's not much bigger than an average closet. Um. Anyway, what am I doing today? I don't know what I'm doing today. I'm wearing this maroon colored dress, so we'll do something that goes along with that. <clears throat> what do we want to talk about? Let's see, in my video yesterday, I talked about growing up in the 90s. My favorite TV show when I was in high school for was Dawson's Creek. I loved that show. I did not realize that that show was not for teenagers. It really isn't. Um, All right, something in my teeth. That show is so dirty-minded. Uh, and those kids, how did anybody think that they were actually teenagers? I was like, wow, these guys totally look like teenagers. They're like... Oh, jeez, Ronan, you scared me. They're like, those... Most of them were like in their 20s and they're playing like 14-year-olds. I think it's so funny that, you know, Hollywood does that all the time. Like, no, they can't have actual teenagers playing teenagers. <laughs> I think I watched the first like two seasons and then I stopped watching it because uh, I was working so much and I just never really picked it back up. So as an adult, I tried to go back and watch it and I was like, holy crap, why was anybody letting me watch this as a teenager? So bad. <laughs> I also really liked the show Seventh Heaven. I thought it was so such a wholesome show and whatever when I was a a kid? No, it was not. Like in every single episode, the kids are like making out with other kids and stuff, and it's like, wait, why is this supposedly a wholesome family show directed at little kids? And they've got like a seven year old kissing a girl and stuff. It's like, gosh. Like none of those shows. Like, going back and watching some of the cartoons and stuff, too, there's so many innuendos in it. And, of course, now with that, with all that stuff coming out about Nickelodeon and um, all the child abuse and stuff, it kind of, like, it's like, wow, they were, like, putting it right in your face. And, like, nobody realized it. I feel like shows directed towards little kids these days are far more wholesome. Like, Bluey. Bluey is such a cute show, you guys. It's so good. It's good for parents, too. Um, you know, it talks about, like, parenting through trauma. It talks about issues like infertility. Uh, like, really big, real-world issues. And it does it in a way that's entertaining for kids and helpful for parents. And I love it. And the, like the Disney movies that have come out in the last few years, like um, Encanto, oh my gosh, that was the best. Dealing with generational trauma, that was so good. The writing was so good. I cried through that whole movie. I still can't get through the movie without crying because it's so real. It's so raw and it's so it does it so well. Um, and. Uh, there's another one, Turning Red. Oh my gosh, people went nuts over Turning Red because they talked about periods. I'm glad they did. That was, it was so well done.
fun. I mean, the the ritual at the end where it was kind of like, that was a little weird, but, you know, it was, it was a good movie. And I'm like, I love these movies that focus on like real world, like real issues and do it in such a beautiful way. You know, like in, in Turning Red, yeah, there was generational trauma and the mom had issues because of her mom, but they were able to heal and work together and build the relationship better. And that it was just, it was so beautiful. I think they, they did a great job on it. Generational trauma is such a real thing. And I think like a lot of us had parents that didn't know how to be good parents because of because of their own trauma you know and a lot of us started our own parenting journey not having good examples and having to having to figure that out you hit the stupid wing right you guys um having to figure that out on their own like um my mom and i get along really well now but we didn't we didn't get along well um and i had to be the the chain breaker you know the the one that tried to break those generational traumas and i i'm sure that i'm sure that there's stuff that i miss nobody's perfect you know and try to you know try to, to parent in a healthier way because so many of us our parents were taught that the way that you deal with kids is that you spank and that's not healthy you guys it's really not and if you were taught that you know it's never too late to, to change um I don't believe that children have to be spanked to learn you know you, you wouldn't go up to an adult and slap them to teach them a lesson why would you why would you do that to a kid? And people, because I think people don't know how to discipline without spanking, they will like, that's a hill we'll die on sort of thing. They, they defend it. And I get it. You don't want to look at yourself and be like, oh my gosh, I physically hit my child. They're like, no, it's, it's spanking. It's not hitting. Oh well, yeah, it actually is. Um, <sighs> And there's mountains of evidence that it causes harm. But people don't want to believe that because that's the only way they know how to discipline. <coughs> and I get it. That's, you know, it's hard. It's hard to change. It's hard to do something different than what you were taught. It's hard to do something different than what you grew up with. And it's hard to be like, well, this is causing problems, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, and I feel like Bluey especially touches on that. And it's, it's such a good show, you guys. Parenting can be hard. It's not easy. And honestly, it's harder when you try to, it's worth doing. It's absolutely worth doing. But when you try to view, view parenting as not just I'm in charge because I created you, it's I want to learn from you as much as I'm teaching you. I want to let you have input. I mean, age appropriate input. Obviously, you're not going to be like to your kid, be like, oh, do you want to run out in the street or do you want to be safe? Like, no, that's not that's not what I mean. You have to have appropriate boundaries. But in it is good to let your kids have some input, have some autonomy, because childhood is not a time where you're supposed to be controlled by other people and just learn to sit down, shut up, and do as you're told. Childhood is practice for the rest of your life. It's where you're supposed to be learning how to be an independent person that can make decisions. And you're gonna screw it up sometimes. You're gonna make bad decisions sometimes. 
If a child can learn how to deal with making bad decisions in a healthy and safe way, they are going to be a more productive, more confident, more stable adult for the rest of their life. So parenting, parenting is a big deal. You know, I've always, I've always taken parenting really seriously because it's like, I got one shot at this and I don't want to screw it up. And you know, like I said, definitely not perfect, but that's how, that's my philosophy on parenting. And, um, I've always told my children, if they have a good argument, I will listen and adjust. And there, there's been times where my kids are like, hey, this, you know, this is how I feel about something and I want you to, I want you to think about it. And I have, and we've, you know, come to some sort of an agreement, been like, <laughs> and then there's, it, 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 and my kids are more willing to listen to me when I'm like, hey, this, the dog is barking at the deer, by the way, if you can hear her, where the kids don't like a rule that I have, but I explain to them, this is why I have this rule, and I, I don't mind them challenging me, as long as they're respectful. Like, respect is one thing that we do, we're like, hey, you know, you can't, you can't yell at me, you can't, you, you can't call names, you know, that sort of thing. I treat them with respect and I expect them to treat me with respect. Mom, I need a Can you use the other potty? It's closed. Oh, is somebody in there? Okay, okay. Okay, and then back. Um, as I was saying, I, I do my best to treat my kids with respect. I've never seen them as, like, lower than or less than me. I see them as... <clears throat> individual human beings with um, individual desires, dreams, wants, needs, completely different from my own. And uh, so like if I have a rule about something and they don't think the rule makes sense, they'll, I, I give them place to, to argue in a respectful way as to why they think the rule should be changed. And if they have a good argument, I will, I will absolutely hear them out and adjust. Um, you know, I feel like that's important because kids need to know that they have a voice. They need to be given a voice because there's so many of us that don't know how to stand up for ourselves. I definitely didn't learn how to stand up for myself until well into adulthood. And even then I always felt guilty for being like, no, these are my needs and this is what what I need and making boundaries and stuff. Sorry about the dog. There's a whole herd of deer in the backyard and the dog is absolutely going nuts. She can't get to them. She's, uh, we have a fence uh, so she can't actually get to them, but she just goes nuts. Uh, anyway, and back to my original point, I think it's absolutely wonderful that a lot of TV shows made for kids are now addressing that and being like, yeah, kids are, kids are people. Kids are not property. Kids are not people that don't have any sort of like there, there's this whole idea that kids are just like blank slates and they become like whatever you want them to be and that's just not true every child is created with their own personality with their own likes and dislikes and their own drives and what you got to do as a parent is help them to become the best version of themselves and in doing so you have to get to know who they are like really who they are, what they like, what they dislike, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. <clears throat> and that changes over time. Um, you know, their interests change, their personality changes, and you have to get to know every version of your child because it's going to be different from year to year. Even in adulthood, people change and 
that's a good thing. If you're not changing and growing, then you're stagnant and probably toxic. Um, so it's, it's, it's really, I really love the fact that these TV shows and movies are like delving into that because I think it's so helpful. <clears throat> I think it's just, I think it's just wonderful. And you know, there, there's still a lot of like silly, stupid cartoons and so not every show has to have some sort of lesson I think I think it's all right to just enjoy something just because it's silly and goofy and stupid you know if somebody there's just too many people in this world that if if you say, hey, you really hurt my feelings, and then they make your feelings out to be the problem. Oh, well, just don't have hurt feelings. Well, that's, you know, most of the time when people are telling you, hey, you hurt my feelings, they're not trying to impose something on you. They're not trying to shame you. They're not trying to make you feel bad. They're trying to heal the relationship because they're like, hey, this hurt, and I'm trying to communicate that this hurt so that we can be better as friends, as a couple, as, you know, parent and child, whatever, because my, my feelings are valid and I don't want you to continue hurting my feelings and I don't think that you hurt my feelings on purpose. I want to, I want to talk this out. But when somebody just goes on the attack and is like, oh, well, actually, and gets defensive and turns the blame around and stuff, like narcissistic sort of behavior, that just makes everything worse for everybody. So don't do that. Don't ever do that. That was done to me a lot. And it, like most recently, a couple of days ago. <clears throat> what? I will get popcorn at the store today, okay? Somebody really hurt my feelings. Somebody I care about. And I was like, hey, that really hurt. And instead of apologizing or taking responsibility this person just deflected it at me and was like no the real problem is you just have hurt feelings all the time and that's not my fault that's that's your fault just don't be hurt and I was like yeah that doesn't that doesn't actually help anything I will go to the store after I do, do my makeup okay I know you want popcorn So, yeah, this is, that's just my, it doesn't help relationships at all. You, you need the bathroom? Can you, can you wait like two minutes and I'm almost done? Or can you use the other bathroom at all? Okay, okay, I'll pause my video. You can come in and go. Okay, anyway, as I was saying. When, when somebody tells you that, that you hurt their feelings, unless they're like screaming in your face and being like, how, like, I don't, I don't even know how that would, so I definitely don't do that. Um, I feel like it's important to be curious, to be like, you know, when I, nobody's perfect. Everybody's going to screw up and unintentionally hurt somebody's feelings at some point. When my kids are like, hey, mom, you hurt my feelings, let's talk about it. We sit down and talk about it, and I apologize for hurting their feelings. And I say, hey, how can I do this better next time? Uh, did I, you know, cross your boundaries? Or if it's like, it's like, well, you hurt my feelings because you grounded me off on my phone for lying to you. Well, no, that's going to be, that's going to be like, I'm sorry that that hurt your feelings, but... You needed consequences for lying. Lying is not okay. Lying hurts people. You know, that's a different thing. But if it's like, hey, you forgot my birthday. Well, well not me. I've never forgotten my kids' birthdays. But, like, I'm just an example. Or you said something that kind of, like, made me feel bad. Like, you were teasing me about my hair. And, uh, again, I not something I did with my kids, but stuff that's happened to me in the past. 
um, if I said some something to somebody like, hey, it hurt my feelings that you told me that I looked like a mop because of the wig I was wearing. Maybe, you know, don't say things like that. And the response was, well, it was stupid, so I had every right to make fun of you. That's not an apology. But if the response is, gosh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel that way. Um, how can, how can we fix this? That would be a real apology, a genuine connection. Like there's, or if somebody gets mad, like, let's say, let's say hypothetically speaking, somebody was like, <laughs> you're really stupid. And then it hurt my feelings and I was crying. Um, and then I was like, hey, that wasn't very nice. And then this person would be like, because there, there's different ways this could go. The person was like, hey, I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. That makes the relationship better. It makes people connect. It, you know, makes things grow stronger. You feel validated. The other person realizes they crossed a line. They, they know that not to do that again. And the relationship grows. But if the person is like, <laughs> well, it's stupid anyway, so I should get to say whatever I feel like. And if you're hurt about it, that's your problem. That causes relationships to fall apart. That causes the person that's hurt to be more hurt and to think this person is not safe for me to share my feelings with. This person is not safe for me. And that can, it can really destroy a person when you don't know how to apologize or don't want to apologize and just deflect and try to put the blame on the person that got hurt. And, and I've seen this stuff addressed in cartoons like Bluey and um, Turning Red and stuff. And it's just, it's just such a beautiful thing that people are learning these concepts as children so that we can raise a generation. What do you want? Yes, you can have the ice cream sandwich. We can raise a generation of people that have emotional awareness and understand how to build relationships instead of tear them down. And I, I just think that's that's just a beautiful thing. Anyway, gotta edit this video, got a lot of like stops in here, so I hope you guys have a wonderful, beautiful day. And if there's anybody tearing you down in your life, just know that you are beautiful, you are wonderful, you are loved, you are precious, you are a child of God. And when somebody mistreats you, that says more about them than it does about you. If somebody's mistreating you, it's not your fault. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of kindness. You are worthy of compassion. You are worthy, okay? Just by the fact that you exist. I love all of you. Thanks for joining me today.